Really nice book. Really puts it in perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi! Hi everyone, this is Charlie, and I'm here with a book that we chose for one of our round table reads, or and one of my videos that I'm doing here. George Orwell's 1984. Now, in earlier sessions, in earlier episodes, and seasons, actually, we've discussed George Orwell's 1984. But I figured, hey, why not the graphic novel version? Small disclaimer, personally, I'm not a graphic novel person, fan type, whatever. But I really, really appreciate the work that goes into making a graphic novel. It's not, it's not easy to make this. You gotta really know your stuff there. So I, kudos and cookies to whoever has just, they just sit there and hours and hours and hours. So I appreciate it for that. But for me, I'm not really, that's just me. I'm not really a graphic novel person. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. So, um, really paints the picture. Really puts everything into perspective. We all know about 1984. It was also a very good year. However, the book itself. It's set back in London. We all, you know, it is, you can find all this on the back. Got this from my local county library where I work. So, I'm just going to get this off the back cover, give you a quick synopsis here. In 1984, London is a grim city in the total, total, totalitarian state of Oceania, where Big Brother is always watching. So, and the thought police can always get you for whatever reason. Now, that I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. Um, basically, the brief overall synopsis is there is a type of like TV or kind of device. You cannot turn this thing off, or the thought police will come. It just emits. It, it's just like a TV, like General Hospital. I'm not. I'm not trying to quote things. It, it's a distraction in a way, because Big Brother is literally always watching. Some of you probably get that feeling when you're at the self-checkouts. I'm not trying to make a joke or anything. But yes, sometimes we get that feeling. We're in the stores or any... In this case, Big Brother is actually in your home. And this is before Alexa. But anyway, and of course this is set into the future. But, um... Just really... Um, the artwork alone is really stunning. Because when I picked this up, at first I was like... Oh, holy cow! And then I see well, something like this. All the detail and just the... Ay, ay, ay. So, um, and something as simple as a boot, a faded boot, just right there. And in that, I'm going to read this to you here. Tacitly, the party was even inclined, inclined to encourage prostitution as an outer for insects. I'm sorry, in, 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 uh, instincts which could not be altogether suppressed. What does that mean exactly? Good question. Um, I'm too young for that one. Every, when you're not allowed to think in this totalitarian government, this this just you're not allowed to think. If you think you're wrong, you're going to be silenced by this box, this TV, whatever. It's it's you know you basically you're working and you're going back home. You have a little bit of pleasure, that's it. And it's basically what Big Brother deems. So, um, it's really an eye-opener. Because it's it also serves, to me, I feel, serves as a warning for uh, what happens to those with... And I'm going to just generalize, generalize, generalize. I'm not talking here in the, the Americas, the United States. I'm talking about any other place. Keep, keep an eye out and just make sure that you're um, aware of what's going on around you. It's okay to ask questions and it's okay to get involved here and there. Um, but we think you can draw inference from what I'm saying. Um, because we don't want to have it where you have lost the freedom to think. Because without the freedom to think, you lose pretty much everything out there. I don't want to go too much more into this. I'm giving this... Oh, let's see. We can only do five stars? Oh, shoot. Well, I have a feeling Big Brother's always watching, so... I'm going to give this a five out of five out of five. So, can we do that? No. Five out of five stars. Brilliant. And the work itself, too. The detail. 
that went into it. There's destruction, there's war, there's, uh-oh, I gotta watch this one. He's thinking a little bit, you know, and it's just, it, it really, it, 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 you know, here's another one here. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. No, it's not. The slogans, also, that box is also pushing these false narratives. You can't think. Don't think, don't use up what's up here, or we'll come and get you. Now, I'm, of course, paraphrasing very loosely here, but if you hear, if, if, if I heard that today, dear Senator of what it's so-and-so, I am very concerned of what I, thankfully, we have not gone down this rabbit hole entirely. Let's make sure we don't. This is also a, like I said, um, a very good lesson for us all, and... If you are a history teacher, I would probably see, see if you can justify using this in a, in a curriculum. The reason I say that is because without, you know, getting the P word involved, um, politics, you can explain to people from the historical aspects of this, just like you can do with almost any other item. And, um, but again, this is, again, something you would want to not take at face value, read it, enjoy it. You know, it's it's... This has opened my mind to graphic novels a little bit more. So I'm going to head off now and I'm going to try and not knock over that bowl of soup over there. So once again, um, it's the, and this is the adapted and illustrated by Fido Nestri, George Orwell's 1984, the graphic novel. You can get your local library. You can go to your local bookstore too if you want. But try your library first and then go to your bookstore. All right. Here we go. Oh, goody. What do we have here today? Yeah. <laughs> Ow. 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 